So this is about parenting as social activism, and I want to save the world, and this is why. There we go. This is why. And this is how I'm going to do it. Yep. It's a glass of water. Yeah. We've all heard that saying, is the glass half full or half empty? Well, let's see. When I think about the level of suffering, we just heard about ecology, we just heard about pollution and starvation, I feel sick, my heart hurts. And what I do know <clears throat> is that there is no single effort more radical in its potential for saving the world than a transformation of how we raise our children. So if we, together, as mama, papa, auntie, uncle, tutu, teacher, coach, mentor, if we rise to this challenge <clears throat> to consciously parent our children, to empower them so they know their strengths and their capability, they will save our world. So we've got a nine-year-old. I am big, I am strong, and Auntie needs my help, and guess what? I'm going to go mow her lawn. So he goes out there, and he spends two hours in the hot haiku sun. Yeah, it wasn't a small lawn. <clears throat> Mowing. And you can imagine what a lawn mowed by a nine-year-old looks like. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So he goes, Auntie, Auntie, come, come, look what I did. No, close your eyes, close your eyes. And then she opens her eyes, and being a loving, supportive auntie, oh, yay, thank you so much, oh. And then she sees the jiggity-jaggity edges. My ferns, you ran over my ferns, oh, no. And look at that whole side of the house. Did you forget that whole side of the house? It is over there, right? So what happens to our nine-year-old? Oh, remember that sick feeling? Yeah, we've all experienced it. So does Auntie want to crush his dream of being her hero? No, absolutely not. But Auntie thinks that teaching is important, and teaching is important. And what I know is that this is the half-full moment. This is the moment when our nine-year-old needs to know that his heroics, his strength, his beautiful, loving heart is seen. Because he's thinking in his mind, jiggity-jaggity edges, I should have just stayed inside. I should have just played my video games, right? I don't need my dreams of being her hero crushed. So why does Auntie do it? Why does Auntie focus on the jiggity-jaggity edges? Can I let him think this is a well-mowed lawn? And I'm saying, yeah, for the moment. We don't need to focus on that. We get to focus on his heart. The teaching will happen when the student is ready, and he is ready in that moment to feel that you see, you really get his beautiful heart. So, this is an issue of timing. Auntie thinks now is the time to teach about mowing. <clears throat> so the Clifton Strength Finders assessment basically was developed to start a conversation about what's right with people. They were tired of living in a world that had a global obsession with what is wrong. And they discovered that people have six times more potential, six times more energy, when they are developing their strengths instead of their deficiencies. Six times. So what could we do with six times more energy, more growth, more potential? I mean, you've heard so many speakers already today, and they have such amazing ideas. What about six times that? So let's rewind. Auntie, Auntie, look, I mowed your lawn. No, cover your eyes. Okay. Look. And Auntie says, yes, look at you. Two hours in the hot haiku sun. Oh my gosh, pushing a heavy lawnmower? Oh, now I don't have to do it. And this is called attunement. Auntie gets it, he gets it. Yeah! So, another story. 
This is from last week. A child is learning to read. She's practicing, she's memorizing her sight words. She practices for 38 minutes and gets 17 consistently correct. Three, she struggles with. So where is her focus? She takes out her lovely pencil and she circles those three. And this is how she feels. And this, because she's holding it together actually really well, is what she wants to do. Ah! I can't read! Ah! This is horrible. And so, being a loving, supportive adult, it's okay, I see that you're trying, we're just gonna keep working at it, but where is her focus? So I ask her to count the number that she knows. One, two, all the way to 17. And then, on her own, and this is the brilliance, she pulls out her pencil and she, one, two, she writes the numbers down beside each of the one that she knows. And this is where she ends up. I got it, I know 70, yay! Is she holding back? No, she is not holding back, right? All right, so how someone thinks is how someone feels and it's how they act. She's gonna continue to practice her reading. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, if I believe that I can do something, if I know that I'm courageous and strong and have a beautiful heroic heart, then I act from that place. If I know that I can read, then I continue to practice. Oh, I didn't get that one. Oh, I can read this. Look what I can read. And I will act. If I question myself, if I doubt, if I think that I'm wrong, then I will most likely not act because I will be thinking there's too many flaws within me to be fixed. And I definitely will not put my energy towards saving the world. 303 positive descriptors I've used in this talk in less than 10 minutes. This is what we need to reflect back to our children their competence, because in their competence, they will act, and each positive action will change the world. So when you encounter a child, notice the courage it took to look you in the eye. Notice how she's sitting so beautifully with patience and her little hands crossed. Notice the enthusiasm in his 20 questions. Notice her persistence in getting the details just right in her painting. And notice the two hours, notice the heroic heart, notice the 17 words. And notice with enthusiasm. Let's look back to our reader. Hello, was she enthusiastic? Yeah, she was, right? So think about it. When we lecture our kids, we put a lot of energy into that, right? We're all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay. You know, our veins are popping out, we got the red face, all of that. So switch it over. Pull it back from there and put it into the place where, right on, yes, you can read, absolutely. Because the child in that moment has the felt sense of her competence, and that is going to be the tool that will save our world. So for right now, we get to let go of the teaching, the teaching of the task, because that will come. Last story. Your child has a bag of M&Ms, yeah? Oh, eating M&Ms. Will you please share with sister? So what does he do? He like looks around and he finds like the one little broken one, right? <laughs> Hands that over to sister. And sister's like, oh, what? And so our natural inclination, right? Because we have been focused, we have been trained to focus on the problem is to grab that bag away from him and say, you greedy little boy, let me, I'm going to give this whole bag to her. That'll teach you some manners, right? Okay, all right. So we like hold back and we say, thank you for sharing. And then later when he's sharing his blocks or he moves over on the couch to let his friend sit down, that's when the real teaching happens. We say, oh, look at your sharing, and we make a big deal about it. We are a cheerleader in that moment for his natural sharing that comes forth so that he knows that he shares. Then, the next time that we ask him to share his M&Ms, 
<laughs> We're going to be a little more specific. Will you share a handful of M&Ms with sister? What? A handful? Oh. So when he begrudgingly gives her probably a half a handful because he, he, it's hard to... We notice and we say, thank you for sharing. You are so kind and generous, and I know that that was hard for you. Right? Because we could take that into an adult example and say, oh, you got 20 purses. Why can't I have one? Hello, you've had that man for 17 years. I want him. <laughs> no way. I'm not sharing. I'm not doing it. Right. So their heroics will heal our world. They need that felt sense in the moment of knowing that they can do it and how they can do their part. Now, don't be hard on yourselves because this is not what was modeled to us. What was modeled to us is there's a problem, fix it. Oh, you don't got that right, fix that, right? So what we need to do is to feel your glass because the this, this is a glass with water and air. And so we can choose to fo focus on the water or the air. So be kind to yourself and notice their heroics. So my challenge to you is to say 25 positive things to every child you encounter every day for two weeks and place a filled glass of water, half-filled glass of water, somewhere where you can see it to remind you. Here are some statements. These are some concrete, specific, glass-filling statements that you can say to these children as you encounter them. And know that it doesn't get any more local than this. You, your life here on Maui, the children that you see in your home, on the playground, at the movies, and in the restaurants, you get to say this. So let's build their competency by filling their glass and save the world. You can do it. Thank you.